Today I want to talk to you about what a novel research topic is and how to find them and how to know that they are actually novel. Before I get started, I do want to let you know that I have a 30 day research jumpstart guide that's going to walk you through some of the things I'm going to talk about today, but it's also going to give you step by step checklist for what you need to do each week for four weeks to be able to actually start collecting publishable data. And you can get that using the link in the description below. So whenever you're looking to publish into journals and to do research projects that will end up being published, you really want to make sure that they're actually going to be novel research projects. If they're things that are already done before, they're going to have a very low likelihood of actually being published. So a novel research project or research topic is something that has basically never been done before, right? Like it's new, it's going to add to the literature, it's going to add to our understanding of that portion of science, right? But a lot of times people think that something has to be super novel, super out there, has nothing that's been anything similar to what's been done before, and that's the projects that they want to pursue. And I think that a lot of this comes down to kind of our own insecurities, especially when you're getting started in science. You want to make sure that what you're doing is like the best possible and you're going to impress people and everything like that. And so you actually pass over potentially a lot of projects that have some level of novelty to it, but don't seem like a completely novel project. And in reality, those are the projects that are probably going to actually help you grow and impress people the most because they're going to be more feasible to be completed than something that's so novel and out there that it's going to take, you know, 10 to 12 projects to actually get to where you're completing that one project. This can be seen a lot in things like nature papers, even though nature papers most of the time aren't completely novel. In reality, if you look at most nature papers, you could probably break them down into three to five different potential papers or projects that were completed that were then smushed together to make this really, really novel project instead of it being stepwise along the way. So in our goal today, and what I'm going to be talking about is actually to help you figure out how to find projects that have some level of novelty and recognizing that level of novelty. Well, I've talked about before different exercises you can go through to find great research topics that you can find out in this video above. Or if you're in my research accelerator course, I go through a whole system about how to find your research topics and how to determine its novelty. I'm really going to simplify that and sum it up in this video today. And so I'm only going to talk about two kind of general ways for finding new research topics. One is combining two topics and the second is expanding upon those topics. So we're going to actually take my um, very first research publication. It wasn't the first project I did, but it was my first research publication. And I'm going to kind of walk you through how I got to that project. So the first thing I did, this uh, publication was on steroids and eye mobility. So at the time I was in a um, eye mobility group uh, that worked a lot in separating out mainly carbohydrates through eye mobility, but I wasn't really interested in carbohydrates. Instead, I was interested in steroids and I knew that there had been like a lot of work done on chromatography and steroids. But because I was in an eye mobility group, I decided to combine those two topics. And I was like, okay, I want to do steroids and eye mobility. And so I was also in a group that did a lot of metal adduction. So I decided I wanted to do a project on steroids, separating them out using eye mobility and seeing if metals could separate them out further than just um, as eye mobility themselves. And so what I'm going to now do is do the search I did then. So the so now that I have a project, I want to see is it actually novel or have people done this before. So once you have your idea, what you want to do is actually come up with keywords. So I usually go for two to four keywords. So in this case, I'm going to do steroids and ion mobility. And if you want to know how to work like Google search logic, check out this video above that's going to help you work through doing that. So we're doing um, up to 2017. So we can see steroids and eye mobility. We're getting some LCM SMS. That's not really my project. So separation of steroids by eye mobility. This could be it. So I'm going to open this up in a new tab. Eye mobility, mass spectrometry separations, 
cool. That's also really related. And here we have experimental and theoretical investigation of sodiated multimers. So somebody is clearly doing metal adduction, ion mobility, and steroids. That was my three things. Um, so we're going to open up this. So this is now the closest one just by the title that tells me that somebody's probably already doing something in the wheelhouse of what I was doing. So if I read through this paper and just in here, I can see that they're predominantly using um, sodium to see does it actually increase it. And what they're seeing is that when they form multimers, so two steroids adducted to the same metal, that they get an increased separation here. And they're doing um, CCSs and they did some actual theoretical modeling of these things. Okay, so I know that just Throwing some things in with sodium is not going to be novel. It's not going to be published. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is look at some of the uh, these other ones. What else has been done? So if I come in here, and I'm just going to accept the cookies so I can look at this. So I'm just going to right now look at just the abstracts because you don't need to read all of these papers to figure out like what's just been done. So we can see that they looked at eight isomer groups, were investigated as proteated and sodiated species, okay? And they have a bunch of their groups, said that they increased resolution. They looked at different drift gases, okay? And then finally, they looked at um, alkali, alkali earth metal and transition row metals were analyzed between steroid epimers. Okay, so this looks like, okay, everything's been done, right? They did a bunch of different ones. So I actually read this paper and I know that they only did this on one set of steroid isomers, which you can see here they called steroid epimers. The, so they ha while they had eight sets of isomers, they only did this study on one of them. So now we come into the second way. So I know that my original idea was not novel. So one option would be just to scrap the idea. Okay, that's not novel. Let's move on to something that is novel. The second option is how can I expand on this, right? So if they only, if they looked at these different metals with only one set, well, from other groups doing carbohydrate work, we actually know that different isomers can have better or worse on different sets. So what would be really cool is to see, okay, how do these different metals differ with all the different steroids that they used instead of only one set of those steroids? So now I wanna make sure that that hasn't actually been done. So I'm gonna come back here and look at this one. And this one is predominantly doing it through derivatization. So that doesn't cut down on the novelty of my new idea. So I'm going to keep going through here because steroids and eye mobility is a really catch-all term for all of this. And I'm going to say, okay, this is doing um, things with liquid chromatography. And now once we get past this, we're really not seeing the eye, we're not seeing the combination of eye mobility and steroids anymore. So this is now gas chromatography. This is just ion mobilities on chemical food. We're, we've now gone out of it. So really at this point, there's only been maybe four or five papers that really touch on steroids and ion mobility. And I haven't even gone to the second page of Google, right? Or Google Scholar. So based on that, I'm going to say, my new idea of taking a set of steroids and running them against different um, metal adducts and looking at them through eye mobility is going to most likely be novel. Like 90%, nobody's done it before. Because if they had, and I can even come in here and say, and metal adduction, right? Make sure that it wasn't something getting mistaken. And so you can see, again, we have these two right here. And then they're no longer talking about steroids anymore, right? And so this right here is telling me I'm not going to keep looking for days and days to see if anyone's possibly done it before. This is ranking it based off relevancy, right? So if it showed up in the first page, then I would be like, okay, it's been done. And that's what I did, right? I sat here and I said, okay, someone's done the basic. Let's, how do we expand upon that? So now if I take off this date customization, you can see that now we actually have a lot. 
So you can see here, this is the first published paper that I did where I actually did that. And literally that was my steps for determining if it was novel, right? Like, and if you're in a, if you're in a bigger field, right, you might have to go through more and more steps. You might keep finding it within the first few pages, but look at when your searches are no longer really relevant to your topics. Google's trying to match the relevancy, but they're not highly relevant. So then if you come in here, you can see I did three different metals with, I think this was five or seven different steroid isomers. So yeah, here's the different isomers that we use. And it got published because nobody had done it and I didn't spend days and hours and years trying to make it more novel or trying to see if it's been novel or coming up with some extremely novel idea that was gonna take me years and years and projects and projects to get there. But this was really important. And then I kept going on this. So if you look, if we keep going, here's another one. So this built on the previous one. And so once you have that one project, you can keep saying, okay, how can I expand this? How can I combine this with other things? And has anyone done this before? And then you just kind of keep growing your portfolio from there. And the more you practice this, the more it kind of becomes second nature to just go in and do this. And if you haven't already, make sure you go download my 30 day research jumpstart guide. It's gonna help walk you through this just like I did here. And I think it's really gonna be helpful for you if you're just getting started in your research to find these novel topics that you actually wanna work on and are actually significant so that you can start building up your own projects and publications. I hope you enjoyed this video and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.